mission of Christ's life was his death. It was his glory or his hour, as he kept calling it in John's Gospel. And on the night before Jesus died, he instituted a meal to commemorate this central act of his coming. Incredibly, Jesus did not mainly set himself forth as the host of this meal, although he is. It is the Lord's Supper, after all. But more fundamentally, he's not just the host. Jesus offers himself as the main course. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. The meaning of his death is contained in this little phrase. Jesus, torn apart like bread, is given that we might live. He is devoured that we might be fed. He is broken that we might be nourished. To be eaten up is a common way of speaking about death. Uh, For instance, the, the psalmist speaks of his deadly foes like this. In Psalm 27 verse 2, he says, When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. When a person eats the flesh of another, they take advantage of their death. So when Jesus asks us to devour him, he's wanting us to take advantage of his sacrifice. In fact, uh, that was the destination for the Old Testament sacrifices. After they were killed, they became dinner. First, they turned away wrath as a sacrifice. Then they nourished the people as food. The Passover lamb was the same. First, its blood shielded from judgment and then it sustained the people for their journey out of Egypt. And so it is with Jesus. He is our sacrifice and our fellowship meal. He is given for us as our atoning sacrifice, and He is given to us as our ongoing sustenance. Jesus really is the bread of life, and it's His death that brings us life. Think of a loaf torn apart and handed to you, freely offered, life-giving hunger satisfying, fellowship creating, generous, nourishing, available. That is Jesus for you. Now think of his blood. Matthew 26 from verse 27. Then Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's a shocking dramatization of the cross. Bread torn apart, this is my body. Red wine poured out, this is my blood. Jesus would be utterly consumed and exhausted on the cross, broken and expended for us. That's the whole point, for us. It's for us. Jesus takes death, we get the feast. He gives his blood, we get the banquet. And just think of what blood means. In the Bible, Leviticus chapter 17, the Lord speaks of the blood of the sacrifices. And he says, for the life of the creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. To pour out blood is to pour out life. And this is what Jesus does for us. He gives his infinitely precious blood, the blood of God, According to Acts 20, verse 28, He gives us the blood of God in atonement for our souls. What kind of God is this? The God who becomes the atoning sacrifice and then the food of His guilty people. This is totally unlike the way that we often characterize God. Ever since Adam and Eve, humanity has thought of God as grudging. We naturally imagine that if He is gracious at all, He doles out blessings with a teaspoon. The first lie which the serpent whispered to Eve is believed by us every day. We think that God knows what we need and He's holding out on me. He's a miser. This is what 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 calls the lie. It is the deception which we choose to believe. We think that God is all about forbidding us fruit. We think He holds back because He doesn't want our joy or flourishing. We think of God as a distant, tight-lipped, tight-fisted killjoy. It makes us mistrust Him, shut down, and close off from Him, and then we try to manage life out of our own resources. This lie will kill our spiritual life. So how should we fight the lie? 
with the body and blood of Christ. Who can look to the cross and doubt the generosity of our Lord? At the cross, we see no grudging miser. Here is bread torn apart for the world. Here is life expended to the very last drop. Here is a gushing forth of self that we might live. This God does not dispense blessings with a teaspoon. He pours himself out for us and to us. At the cross, the lie is unmasked. Satan is the miser. We are the selfish ones. God is giver, though it cost him everything, even his very body and blood. Mm -hmm.